Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I figured I would talk about how I plan and navigate my backpacking and bikepacking trips. So I've made something like 400 videos on this channel over the past six years, and recently I said that I was done making the same video I've made a hundred times, but there is one topic that I've touched on in videos, but never made a full video on, one that I get questions about all the time, and even video request for, and that is how I plan and specifically navigate my bikepacking and backpacking trips. It never fails, I'll do a gear list or a Q&A and someone will say, where's your map and compass? Where's your GPS? So since I am planning some through hikes for the rest of the year and a bikepacking trip for next week, I figured now was a good a time as any to talk about some of the tools and methods I've used for navigation over the past six years. So let me navigate myself off this trail real quick back to the studio and we'll go over some of those methods. All right, so first up, let's talk about the old tried and true standby maps and a compass. I feel like this is what most folks think about when they think about navigation on a backpacking trip or a bikepacking trip. And for good reason, this has been around longer than any other navigation tool that I can think of. That being said, I probably have not used a compass and a map since I was in Boy Scouts but I have some hikes and some routes coming up over the next two years where using something like a compass and a map is going to be the most safe and efficient way to navigate my trip. I'm really wanting to do the Grand Enchantment Trail sometime in the next year and using something like a USGS topo map and a compass is going to be key. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go over exactly how to use a compass and a map because I'm pretty rusty after all these years, but I will leave some excellent resources down below on how you can learn how to efficiently route and find your way by using a map and a compass. Again, it is a great tool to use, and a lot of folks even take a map and compass as a backup when they do a trip. Even if they're using a GPS device or a phone, they will still take a paper map just as a backup. But again, I personally have not used a map and a compass for any of the trips that I've done in the last six years. But what I have used the most, and I'd say about 90% of the time, is something like a paper guide or an app. So back in 2015, when I did the Appalachian Trail, I used a guide, a guide book specifically the AWOL guide. What's really great about something like the AWOL guide or a guide for any well-established trail is it doesn't really help you so much with navigation because when you're on something like the AT, you're following a well-defined path and just following blazes from tree to tree to tree, all the way from Georgia to Maine or Maine to Georgia. What the guide really does is it gives you certain waypoints. It lets you know where water's at, it lets you know where campsites are at, gives you elevation profiles. So using the marks on the trail, the blazes and the guide really helps you to navigate a well-established trail. Since 2015, the thing that I've used 90% of the time to navigate my hikes is an app. And the two apps that I use the most are gonna be Guthook or Gaia. What's really great about using an app like Guthook is the fact that it's just like the paper guide. So you're still gonna have your elevation profiles, you're gonna have all of your water sources and campsites, you're gonna have information about close by towns, resupply points, services, but it does use the GPS device in your phone to track where you're at on that map. And you can basically download US topo maps and elevation profiles and everything so even when you don't have service, the app still works because it's using the GPS in your phone. Now, again, using something like Guthook, you can't just find any hike and any trail anywhere. It's very specific hikes, mainly the major long distance trails here in the US, and there are some international trails on here as well. But if I'm doing some sort of a backpacking trip or 
a weekend hike or something with some friends, and I know that I'm not gonna be able to find it on Guthook, the other app that I like to use is Gaia. Now Gaia is very similar to Guthook as far as it uses the GPS on your phone. You get on there, you download the maps, and it tells you where you're at, but it doesn't have all the information as far as resupply points, water, campsites, but is another great tool to use if you're going out for a random backpacking trip or a weekend hike. And both of these apps basically use what's called a GPX file. And a GPX file is basically the USGS topo maps, except for someone has turned that into a digital map and put it, an overlay on it, creating a certain route. And speaking of GPX files, the third way that I use to navigate my hikes and my bikepacking trips and backpacking trips is a GPX file and a GPS device. So something like a Garmin. This is a really old Garmin, the E-Trex 20X. I've had this for years. And I think the last time I used this was on the Arizona Trail in 2016 because the Gut Hook app had not come out yet. But basically what you do is you get onto a website, you find those GPX maps, and then you download them onto a device. So whether that's something like this old E-Trex 20 or the Garmin InReach or the InReach Mini or something like a bike computer, it's a really effective way to navigate your trips. Uh, it's what I used whenever I hiked across Scotland. So there was no gut hook app for that hike. As far as I know, there wasn't a guidebook for that hike. So we downloaded GPX files and then I actually used my phone as my device because you can download GPX apps that work just like one of these devices and then it uses your GPS to tell you where you're at. Same thing with the You Went to Highline Trail. I went on to usgs.org, I found the You Went to Highline Trail, I downloaded that app and then I used my phone as a reader to tell me where I'm at. But for most of my bike packing trips and some of the routes that I really wanna do over the next two years, my plan is to use GPX files and one of these two devices. So because I'm planning this bike packing trip in Utah this coming week, I figured I would show you guys basically how I go about finding all my information, planning my trip, and then downloading everything onto my device. So the website that I really like to use, especially for bike packing uh, trips and touring, is a website called bikepacking.com. So bikepacking.com is a really great website, not just because of gear reviews and trip reports and certain journals and stuff like that, but they have a full library of all of these different bikepacking and touring routes throughout the world. So basically you can get on here and they have this routes map and it pulls up a map of the world and there's all of these flags showing you different routes and different trips that people have done and created GPX files on. So next week I want to do a bike packing trip in southern Utah, northern Arizona. So I'm going to kind of go in to that area and I can see there's tons of different lines and routes that people have planned. Uh, let's see, this one looks good here around Grand Staircase Escalante. I can see that it's a loop. So I hit the flag, instantly it brings up a little box and it tells me what it is. It's 160.5 miles. It's called the Grand Staircase Loop. It's got 11,930 feet of elevation and it gives a little bitty description. But if you click on that, it will basically bring you into this full trip report. It gives you all the information and right off the bat, it tells me it's 160 miles, about three to four day trip, 98% of it's unpaved, it's a difficulty level six out of 10, and the high point is 7,531 feet. So instantly I can say, yeah, this looks good to me. I can scroll down through it. The contributor who put this together has put an excellent trip report talking about all of the different features, excellent photos so I can kind of see what it looks like in the environment that I'm gonna be riding in. And then if I scroll down a little bit further, there's my GPX file, my full on map. 
And what's really great about the system that they use and this GPX reader in particular is just like Gut Hook, they have put in water sources, they put in campsites, they put in services and start and stop points. And then here at the bottom, there's a full elevation profile that if you kind of look at the map, it will take the dot and move it around so you know exactly where the elevation is, where the high points are and where the low points are. And then as soon as I've done all my research about my route, I've checked out all the photos, I've learned as much as I can, I download that GPX file and then I throw it over onto my device. Whether that is my bike GPS or my Garmin inReach or even a GPX reader on my phone, I get out onto the trail or the route and I just follow the track. Whether that is a track that I created with one of the topo maps or that's a route like on bikepacking.com that someone else has created and I just follow it and use that for navigation. It's pretty easy uh, and it's basically everything that I have used over the last six years to successfully not get lost on my trips. Now it's not saying that I haven't been slightly lost on some trips because that still happens even with maps, even with a GPS, even with an app or a guide, it can still happen, you can still get lost. And there's a lot of folks that won't use something like a cell phone app or a device because it has a battery and it can fail. Over six years, personally, I have never had a device fail on me and I've never ran out of power simply because I carry an extra battery brick. And then when I get into towns for resupplies or services, I make sure everything is fully charged up. With that being said, Using a map and a compass and carrying these along with your device is still a good idea. And going forward, there are some trips where I will still bring a map and compass with me just in case something were to fail and I had no way to charge it and I had no service. Again, I will leave some links down below to some of the uh, resources that I've used like bikepacking.com, usgs.org, some great tutorials on how to use a map and compass and hopefully that will help you get more comfortable with planning and navigating your trips. So what is your preferred method for navigation on your trips? Whether it's a bike packing trip or a backpacking trip, do you use a map and compass? Are you a paper guide or an app person or do you use a GPX track on a device? or maybe something that I didn't even mention in this video. Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel, I guess, if you haven't already. And as always, guys, oh, thanks for watching. <laughs>